It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour. A cocktail fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street where they put fine dining into a sandwich and fine booze into a glass and have a three-hour happy hour here every day, Monday through Friday from 4 to 7, and an awesome brunch on the weekend. So come on by. Um, come, you can come down and see the show here. We're here from 4 to 5 on Thursdays usually, or come down any time you like on your own. They're open seven days a week. Wayfair on Ferret Street. Andrew Duhon is back from uh, Christmas holidays. Yeah, so are you. I know. I feel <laughs> just as bad as ever, though. Do you? Do you? No, I feel great. You feel great? Yeah. I feel like I didn't get any sort of rest. Charles Masala no. is here. Charles, did you get a rest over the holidays? I was driving the state. Driving the state? Which I went state? Louisiana. Louisiana to Monroe and back and through the, the rivers. You drove through a river? I did. Well, wonder. that will be an interesting story. <laughs> Leslie Molson is here as well, who cannot play the accordion, apparently. <laughs> well, no, I can, but it's not you very well. S- I got on my bio about you and said you were an accordion player in an all-girl accordion band in New York. So I, I said to Graham DePonte, our producer, tell her to bring her accordion. And she s- said she got a message <laughs> back you can't play the accordion. <laughs> so what's up with that? How could you be in an accordion band if you can't play the accordion? Well, okay, just this lo- kind of long story is short. I used to sing with an accordion player way back in the 90s, and he had a nervous breakdown. Okay. So... Helen July is the cello. <laughs> yes. Typical. I knew you were going to have something to say about that, Helen. <laughs> Helen is a cello player, as yes. you probably know. Yes, I do know. So well, how did the accordion player have a nervous breakdown? Helen, have a guess. Well... Take a stab I, at it. Uh, well, I mean, isn't it obvious? The accordion is <laughs> such a strange... Mm-hmm. All those buttons, there. all those Friction buttons, their buttons. uniform. They could so, be color coded. Why don't they color code those buttons? They Why do they have bu- so they many? They have little raised buttons on the buttons so you can tell what's the C and what's the E. There's buttons on the buttons. There are buttons on, the on the That's buttons. That's on the left hand side with the right because you can't is, see. Is it the muscles pulling it in and out? Blind spot. No, you, you pull it in and out yourself. You know. So when you pull it in and out, is it the same notes going in as out, or do they? Well, it depends on what buttons you're pressing. I mean, in other words, well, it's, I know it's a that, reed. But it's, it's a reed instrument, so the wind is pushing it through the reeds. And when you hold down, the buttons are chords and bass okay. notes, and there's a keyboard. Right. So. Can you hear that buzzing oh. noise? I'm scared to touch it. Oh, oh, that's what it is. I fixed it, though. So I know that on a Cajun accordion, for example, if you push or pull it, it changes the tone, whether you whether the, the bellows are going right. in or out. No. With the piano, the piano accordion, accordion, it's the right. same. Well, in other words, it depends on what buttons you're pressing. Right. What but, you, but, the, the but, the, but the pressure of mm-hmm. either going... the the direction of going in or out makes, makes no, no difference. difference. There's a bandoneon, a tango accordion, right? Ooh. In which you have four dimensions, and those those guys <laughs> oh are really God. out of their minds. <laughs> what are you, they? You, wait, you have the buttons on either side. That's yeah. one, two, right. and then three, four are the in and out. So you have four different pitches mm. available at all times to keep in your head but straight. Isn't that the same with the Cajun accordion? That does the same thing. Whether you're pulling it in or out changes. Is that is that right? It's I don't know. I yes. thought there was a diatonic accordion. That is but, diatonic. But I don't Cajun know accordion. that that. I don't know if you're going in or out, whether it changes unless you change. That makes sense. That I'm buttons. not sure. Is, yeah, you think so? Just, I, you know, well, frankly, I don't well, even what about know. The harmonica? Because, uh, yeah, the harmonica is diatonic, yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrew, get the harmonica. Because it goes in or out, it makes a difference yeah, whether right. you're blowing or sucking, right? Yeah, is that what you want to hear? Yeah, do yeah. a demo on that. We like to say blow or draw. It sounds <laughs> better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, here's a blow. Okay. Here's the draw. So you it's know, completely different. Note. Big difference. It's so that's complete. like a half step up, right? Ten holes, trying twenty notes. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a half step up, is it? I, Not a whole note. I thought I heard a half step up. That was well, you wouldn't know because you're a shitty accordion player. Well, right? yeah, yeah, of <laughs> so Helen is a pro- very proficient cello player. Was yes. that a half note or a whole note? Well, that was a half note. Right that there. was. So you were right, Leslie. Okay. So how bad of an accordion player are you really then? Well, the thing is, is that when I started taking lessons. About a week after I started taking lessons to play the accordion myself, yeah. um, my teacher asked me if I wanted to join this new all-female 18-piece female, all female eighteen piece accordion orchestra called the Main Squeeze Orchestra. Was it a 17-piece before you joined it? <laughs> I don't know. 
Anyway, so... I don't think that was all that funny, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm just thinking... Well, I'm just in my own head realizing that it, that was a whole step, and I just said half step. And oh, uh, it was. was oh, you want to go back. Oh. And so definitely so I actually so, know nothing about so it. So Leslie, I apologize to like the listeners. <laughs> music it's like that listeners. fashion show that just happened. Okay. All right. <laughs> you think it's going to be the drink? Yeah, I'm... I'm in like two two draws in to my Bloody Mary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you are. So, why, so who was your teacher? What was his name? Walter was it a man Coor, or Walter Coor. Who was so you think he was like interested in you in a different dimension? Well, you know, everybody made jokes because it was Walter and like 18 women, and you know, we we went on um, America's Got Talent. Oh my God! And, you know, Did like, you really? Made all kinds of innuendos. It was very embarrassing. Is that on YouTube somewhere? Can we find that? Oh yeah. Now what would we search for? <laughs> Main Squeeze Orchestra. America's Got Talent. We played a Bohemian Rhapsody. How did you do? Well, they voted us down because they only invited us on the show to make fun mm-hmm. of us, you know, which, duh, you know, I should have thought of that, you know, it was girls obvious playing at the court. time, right? And then, and then this germ, weird German guy, like, leading it, and they were like... He's you know, German he, as well. He was, yeah, he, yeah, he passed away, but, you know, Howie Mandel basically had a lot of, like, oh, so, you know, you and 18 women, it was very... I think you needed more Italian judges. The Italians love accordions. <laughs> they do. That would have Italian. Been, you know, totally would have been... Well, who was Italian in your family? I would have voted Europe. for you, no doubt. Right. Charles, are you Italian or was All the way. So you're Sicilian. actually talking about, or were you born there or you were born here? I was born here. You were born here, but you're... All, all my grandparents are all Sicilian from different little towns outside of Palermo, and right. they stayed Ooh. together in Louisiana. Well, I got this great thing in, uh, in the bio that Graham sent me about you. It said that you started some sort of Italian-American organization, and it was going to be called the, what was it going to be called, the Masala Italian Language Foundation or something? Oh, yes. Which would have been uh, MILF. Uh, MILF, yes. <laughs> I was, um, Which I thought was a great idea. <laughs> I don't know how he found that out, but... Uh, I there, don't know the, either, but good There's some Graham. stuff if you dig for. We were... My, my dad was very strong Italian. He always wanted to go back to Italy, and I, I thought to start a foundation. And, and oddly enough, learning the language was a, was a priority. So right. we started off that, and I said... It's not you know, that odd, actually. Yeah, it's not. It's very common. They teach a great Italian class here in New Orleans. Yeah. So we were headed that way, but I thought we better change it or else the uh, the donors might get a little bit nervous. Yeah, but you would have got a lot of more hits if you were called MILF than if you were called... What are you called now? <laughs> Just the Marsala Cultural Foundation. Marsala. Mm. Marsala. M-A-R-S-A-L-A. Like the oh, wine sauce. That's it? What is it? Like a what? The wine sauce. There's Chicken a wine Marsala. Sauce. Chicken, Chicken Marsala. I prefer mm. to say veal. Veal yeah, masala. Masala. That's, that, that is well, classic. veal is more uh, awful than chicken, though. I mean, if you could, if it's worse to kill an animal than, in, than one than the other. But if you're you know, making an analogy, yes. I know. cooked a rabbit the other day. You oh, cooked a oh. rabbit? Why did I do that? that Where did so you get it from? The rouses. <laughs> <laughs> they have rabbits and rouses? But, you know, it was all folded up when I bought it, and then when I got it home and opened it up, oh, my God, I was like, oh, my God, it looks like a rabbit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Does it have its ears on it? No, no, no head or ears. But there's a little stub at the end where the oh, tail would no be. So way. yeah, like I guess there's a, there's a cartilage or something. And I was Cute. like, I cooked it, but I didn't eat it. <laughs> How you cooked oh, it? No. Who did you eat it? Well, That's husband. even worse. I know. I, I just, I was, you know. Like, well, your oh, husband said on the way I, home, I why did you pick up a too rabbit? Close to the sun. Is he, a, I was is like, he a magician? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he makes food disappear. Oh, that's very good. What does he do, your husband? Oh, um, he manages a cab company. Oh, God. Nolan's yeah, Carriage yeah. Cab on Tulane Avenue. Oh, nice. Better the than actual Uber. Ca- better than Uber. <laughs> really? Do they show up? Because um, the other cab company, they, United, it doesn't show up. They so does do. This, you, you know, you what's the name of it? What's it called? Carriage Cab. And why is that better than Uber, exactly? Oh, I, I'm just joking. Because, you know, like all the cabs hate Uber. Mm. Right. You know, uh, Good name. Charles. I've been out at the river, Uber? the lakefront yeah. a lot. No. Uber is driving people to the lakefront like crazy. What have you been doing out there? Every time at Landry's or Brisby's, you go there and there's always somebody that's oh. a, a tourist that's taking an Uber out there. Right. Oh, really? And yeah. today they delivered, they had this promotion where they were delivering king cakes everywhere. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, they tried to get, well, they called my ra- the radio station I work for and tried to get us in on that. But We've got a lot of things to get to. That. You work for a radio station. You work for WWOZ. I do. Right. Huh. It's billed as the best, radio, greatest radio station in the world. It is. But that's what they call themselves. Though you play it on there, I'm sure. I think they are Helen's the greatest. there like every world. at least once a month. I'm, I'm there every day. Really? I see her, but she doesn't see me because <laughs> yeah. I'm like in the office, like typing away. But oh yeah, you yeah, know I love it. it. They've helped me out so much. Yeah. They're what amazing. have they done for you? Well, you know, they've allowed me to go on the air and, and be really nerdy about French chansons. Ah. And, you know. Well, has anyone listened to it? A few people. You I mean, know? do they listen to it in New Orleans? I know they have a no, huge audience to, around the world. Yeah, New Orleans audiences listen they to do. it. When people come here, I feel like they turn on WWOZ to know what's going on. Right. Every odd hour, they have the live wire. Right. 
So, um, but do you find locals listen to it? Do they can they that. can they drag a crowd out to an audience? Like if you have a show and you promote the show on WWZ, yeah. do people show up? Absolutely, yes. they do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, That's it, good it does to know. work. It works. Information dissemination via the airwaves. Yeah, still but I was works. wondering if anyone listens to OZ anymore because it seems yeah. like they still play the same songs they've been playing for. Well, <laughs> it depends. I disagree. What show. They it pretty depends much what do. Show. Depends what you, show, right? Okay. Yeah, shows, you know. Yeah, well, maybe. when I listen, I mean, I'm hearing the same songs in the records well, from the court at the same time. Yeah. I'm yeah. Still Look, still this is passionate <laughs> subject. I know here. James yeah. Booker is not making any more records, but you can't be dissing on WWC no. right no. here, man. Mm-mm. Really? Is no, it that I mean, good? I, really? I mean, I, do I need to, what time do I should I listen I, to? I, it? Tuesday you, night. I have to listen to it all day at work. Tuesday night's great. Wednesday's great. Well, they have like the like progressive jazz shows. You know, get all weird and arty well, on when, it. When, when, when? The World when? Music Show on the weekend. Al- yeah, yeah, super cool. Alaski on Friday night. Well, that Al- World Al- Music Al- the Show is DJs in the, like the what? entire world. Cousin okay. Dimitri's great. Cousin Dimitri's right. good. Sunday, uh, Sunday. Meyer, Wednesday Sunday. morning. Meyer is, you know, my favorite. What time of the day is Look, that? Look, you need to email Which us, one? and we'll, we'll hook mm-hmm. you up on the right yeah. shows. So I'm sure. I guess I could go online to www.org and look at the schedule. I could be on it. We should be there now. We should be there. We just we just launched a two week archives you can actually go back now and listen to shows from two weeks prior mm. well they just on, figured on the that internet, out on the internet yes we just figured that out because wow. we're a non-profit community radio station yeah but, but they have a huge amount of money it's a very no don't they no I thought they were doing really well that. over there no hmm. well but they got a great <laughs> audience but they don't have a audience. podcast but I, will, I will say this one we I have a couple podcasts yeah you know but they don't archive shows I beg your pardon they don't archive shows like on the internet no. The internet, yes. Yes. No, not <laughs> until not until about a month ago. So you can only go back two weeks. So right, a show but, you heard two weeks ago, you could listen to. Right, because because of, FC, because of regulations, you know, because we play music. So you have to, you know, oh, in other words, so I you only see. have the right to play the music oh, right. for, on the air live or for two weeks hmm. after, but then we can't, oh, so we can't save it and, like, we play it. Otherwise, that would be, like, you know. So, Helen, what happens when you, they play a song of yours on there? Do you get paid the same as it's on a like regular a radio station? Dollars in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> but like a regular radio station, you get a, you get a every time they spin well, you. Supposedly, a, there's there's minions out there through ASCAP and BMI that go out and, and collect all these things. We but pay, yeah, we pay money yeah. to yeah, ASCAP you have to pay. and EMI, right, just like restaurants. BMI, and everybody does. Yeah. BMI, yes. But 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 what happens for the two? But that's for one play. So how does that two week thing work? That's pretty interesting. The two week is is included in that. So you get. You get an unlimited number of spins for two weeks now. Right, because the, the user is playing it on demand, like, on their end. Right. And they can't record mm. it or but that, know, disseminate that, it. Does that become a difference between terrestrial radio royalties and streaming royalties? Because that's two different things, isn't it? Yes, yes, we do pay. We actually do pay the ASCAP BMI thing. And then the internet royalties go through NPR Digital Sound Exchange, it's yeah. called. It's like some other. But as, but a non, as a nonprofit, do you get to play songs without paying royalties? No, no. We still have to pay, but at a different rate than a commercial station would. But, right. you know, it costs us, you know, I would say like $1,000 a quarter at the, at the minimum. And that's just for streaming. Well, you would know because oh, you're wow. working in the office, right? Oh, just for streaming only? Well, I'm the office manager, so right. I, see so all, I open all the mail. Okay. <laughs> what do you, so Among cost, other things. <laughs> so it costs oh. them $1,000 a month just for streaming because they have a huge number of live streams on that. But, I mean, that's like $4,000 a year. And we only that's have. That's pretty cheap. That's the live, live stream. Right. And then the two week archive, but then that's it. Okay. What about extraterrestrial royalties? Ooh, good question. Mm. How do you mean extraterrestrial? Out in space. You know oh, what yes. I mean. <laughs> do they listen on the space station? <laughs> how would that work? So, okay, how did the um, how the uh, court in play have a nervous breakdown? Oh, you want to hear that? What story? exactly? Yep. Oh yeah, well, what exactly? That's the boring Bring part. Can we go man. back? Let's go back Bring one back step. Back to the beginning. Yeah. What what is a nervous breakdown exactly? I don't know, but you know, he just uh, you know we were we were playing out, we were getting gigs. Like he and I would do these like we would sing like depression era songs, you know, like what, like, you know, what, like what, you know, like uh, brother, can you spare a dime? And you know, so you got a pretty good voice. Uh, well, you know, I, do, I try. I can tell. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Anywho, so um, she sounds like she's got a good voice, right? I like know. a sort of <laughs> smoky kind of. Do you smoke cigarettes? I do. You do. That's oh, what does man. it. Good yeah, job. No. There's not so many jealous. people. My goal as a teenager was to sound smoke until I sounded like Tula the Bankhead. I think I'm there. All right. Yeah, you got a great wow. sounding <laughs> voice. And also great um, eyeshadow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's very interesting. I'm sort of captivated by it. What does that look? 
What is it called? What? It's like <laughs> it's a lot of it is I think you're referring to my eyeliner. Eyeliner the and stuff eyebrow that's on combo. your eyebrow. On your eye, not eyebrow. Eye, it's eye eyeliner. Liner. It's eyelid. liquid eyeliner. Liquid eyeliner. Liquid eyeliner. Yeah. But it's it. like in a shape. What is that? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, I guess it's sort of like, I mean, okay. I, when I was a teenager, I think I was inspired by um, Elizabeth Taylor and Cleopatra. Oh, yeah. Cleopatra, that's, that's what doing Good yeah. combo. Yes. <laughs> Small and magnetic and round, so I try to make my eyes look larger. By using eyes okay, that's is what you think about yourself. You think I've got a gigantic round face with <laughs> tiny eyes, because that, that's not what you look like to me. But that's well, what you think. Because I have the eyeliner on. But you, <laughs> it works. So it works. Eyeliner's See, working. Like, <laughs> okay. I used to right. think I was like Sarah, plain and tall. That book. Yeah. I was like, I'm so plain looking. Ah. Uh, yeah. I thought my nose was was in and the wrong shape. F- how so did you fix I it? I slept with a clothespin on my nose once. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt so bad. Did you make it Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It was really. That was that one night or for like months. No, one, a couple hours, and then I was like, ow. That must have looked pretty good when you took it off. That yeah, it was awful. It was what awful. did you hate most about yourself in high school, Andrew? Oh, man. Uh, my man boobs, I think. I <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And how I, did you get rid of them? I, was, I, was, I, uh, I always had to get the, the khakis that were husky. You know, uh, it's like you get you get you get khakis boobs. like the Those 34 husky. Well, hot. just Those just to explain boobs. it, you know, I was a, I was a, I was a chubbier kid, you know. Oh. So uh, yeah. 34. When they nice, when nice. we when we switched from like khaki button down shirts to cotton golf tees mm. as the uniform, I was kind of disappointed because you know. It just showed up the moobs a little bit <laughs> better. <laughs> but you were a 34 inch waist, did you say? No, no, I was taking a guess. Ah, yeah, well, that would have been pretty interesting. You see, so were you fat? Yeah, yeah, you were the fat kid. Yeah. Uh huh. How, how did you get rid of the fat? I uh, started playing ball, I guess. And I don't know. I kind of, you know, you, you play ball and then you figure out that as you like get older and play ball, then you need to exercise to play ball better. Mm-hmm. And you kind of like exercising and then you exercise more regularly. So how did that, did, did you get more confident as a kid when you, when you lost weight? Yeah. How, did it change your personality, you think? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like your personality, my personality changed you know, and I guess it's hard to pinpoint yeah, exactly right? when that happened. For lots of reasons. Probably. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know? yeah. I thought you were going to say you lost weight when you started playing the banjo. That's what I thought you were going. <laughs> <laughs> that's easy to tell. People. Yep, that's right. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's the thing with the eyeliner because it's totally working. So could okay. we? Should we all? Could we all try? It? Do you have it on you? Oh yes, but it's it's, it's could very I do unhygienic it? now. Oh really? Uh, I couldn't borrow your eyeliner. No, no, no. What do you think? She's so, a pro. Like, she's a pro. Yeah. She's not gonna get your. What's on your somebody's face? Juice on her eyeliner? <laughs> I, good what news. Is, I have a sharpie. Why just lick my face? Okay, give me this. What color? Oh, it's and, uh, huge. Yeah, yeah. but that yeah, won't we, come yeah. off. Don't be intimidated. That'll work. What What is on someone's eyelid that you can catch? By the way, conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis. Ooh, shit. Have you seen Isabella Rossellini's green porno? Mm. No. Hang on, let me think that. back. No, you you guys would love it. She, but she also talks about germs and, and she talks about insects and she she's obsessed okay. with insects, and uh, she talks about the insects that live on your eyelashes. Well, there oh. are apparently, and they're how they're like suffocating when you put on mascara and stuff. But she's all dressed up like an insect, and she's wow. just hilarious. Is that horrible to kill those insects? Um, no, I mean it's horrible to think that they're there. Mm. In the well, first they place. Yeah, I agree. With that. That is horrible. But actually, they're, they're doing us a right? service. They're what are they They're doing? eating our dead cells. Oh. Skin cells. And where do they come from? Were they created by God as well, or yeah, evolution, probably. or yeah. what? Mm. No, we can blame him for everything. God yeah, screwed like it little up. microscopic and mites like all over your body. Mm. Yeah, are they really? Times, but yeah. where do they come from? You know, the is that evolution? Charles, you know something about animals? Well, I, I know a lot about animals, but yes. I do want to say that you know we have a TV show on YouTube called Aw News. And you'll be able to see your eyeliners on our show because <laughs> we're taping so this for later. If you don't talk oh, into nice. that microphone, oh, no. I'll, 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 I'll stay on this. It's called All News, A W E. A W E dot news. Okay. And, and we, what does A W E stand for? Awesome Wildlife Effort. Awesome oh, Wildlife nice. Effort. Oh. So we started filming elephants and people doing an artist, uh, politicians, going out to sanctuaries, anything we can. Joey and I, who's here right over there. Joey's shooting some he, video. About he's this. doing a great job. We've made about 40 videos so far. Of people in 40. Louisiana, forty, and it's been really uh, what effective. Are they, what are they doing? Each, we've um, we've met just a, a multitude of people where someone's got a sanctuary um, out in Folsom with about four thousand acres. Well, that's one. What are the other thirty nine? 
we've got a great, we've met several artists. We've got one, we just put up a sculpture of one of an elephant 16 feet tall out in Kenner. Wow. Yeah, so we've, we've really, as we've gotten involved, people are starting to come to us saying, I want to be part Kenner, of this. What part of Kenner? Is that in the public uh, land or in someone's? Public <laughs> land right between uh, Divine Mercy and Vineyard Church. Oh, the neutral ground. Yeah, the yeah. neutral ground right uh, there. There's an elephant sculpture there? We just put it up three weeks ago. Oh, how exciting. It was very cool. Yeah. And we had a great sculpture. He's from Columbia, and he, he came to us wow. at a party, and he said, you find me a place, and I'll build this for you. That's beautiful. Nice. And people came. We had a, uh, actually, uh, Billy Nungesser has an elephant we didn't know that's 20 feet long. And he, he brought it out there for the dedication. Billy so Nungesser like, is like a real governor. Re- what is it made out of? <laughs> <laughs> is it made out of like elephant? Or uh, uh, yeah. Blaine Kern made it for, for his dad oh, decades no. ago. Oh and it's a Blaine Kern elephant that was in the background. So hang on a minute. So you've got a a, you're dedicating statement? a statue. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, and he's upstaging you with some sort of paper mache elephant? Uh, he actually gave background because the, the statue okay. is abstract art. So you look it's at an it. Abstract it, elephant. An abstract <laughs> elephant. So it could interpret it as something else. Well, we, we wanted to focus Cleopatra on the Cleopatra. You could. <laughs> ah. We were putting the right eyeliner on it. Right. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so you can. It's mostly the tusks. The tusk and the ears, but but having a. Uh, that could also peanut look like bun. Che Guevara, maybe. It, it, it could have. Uh, Timely. Sure. Timely. So we've mm-hmm. had that, and, and now we're actually um, traveling the coast because of the oysters and some of the stuff going on in the Gulf waters. So it's been fun. Okay, so elephant it's is just one part of you. One part. We we've, we've, uh, we we focus on rhinos, primates, big cats, and then we're also doing the coastal issues of Louisiana, hmm. Very cool. which is why I was driving through the rivers. Okay, so awesome wildlife effort. Yes. So wildlife. So you're combining the where you're likening elephants to oysters. It's all about habitat. The oyster habitat's threatened. The elephant habitat's threatened. We have a lot of stuff going on. And we. We, uh, we started this, and then Pope Francis got involved, and he had a light ah, show yes. in the Vatican. Okay. Pope you know? Francis. That's wow. what I'm glad you, you know, brought up Pope Francis. I went to the Shildrick uh, wa- uh, Elephant we, Sanctuary we in Kenya. There. You, you went there? Oh, yeah. My mom and I went there. We so went to cool. Kenya for, you know, but we went there. Was yeah, amazing. my mom suggested that as well. Did your mom suggest going to Kenya? For- <laughs> I don't have a mom, <laughs> Grant. <laughs> Helen, did your mom ever suggest going to Kenya for a holiday? No. Okay. Why did your mom suggest that? Well, you know, my mom. After the nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Great. And my mom is awesome. I mean. Uh, yeah. No kidding. You know, I, I suggested Japan. She's like, oh, I've already been there because she she was there with the USO in 1967. So Japan was probably out. hasn't changed much. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the Japanese. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, have so, some wine. Look at this. Yeah. No, I ordered a drink. Oh, good job. But um, how long were you there? Uh, Mm, I'm going to say 14 days. He went to like three safaris. But we went to the... You went three safaris in 14 days. That's like one every... Like safari evening. camps. Like they fly you from camp wow. to camp. Yeah, it was wow, pretty this cool. Is What's like the it. name of the wildlife refuge? Huh? Oh, the sh- well, I'm talking about the Sheldrick Wildlife. It's oh. elephants how s- only. How do you spell it? Sheldrick, like S-H-E-L-D-R-I-C. Okay. But what they do is they save orphan elephants. Mm. And then they have these guys... That actually like they're baby elephants, or orphans, and the the workers actually sleep with them. Like when they rescue one, mm-hmm. like they'll they'll give it like a hut and a, and like a person, and they like sleep. And the, the person will sleep and spend like twenty four hours a day with that baby elephant. Uh, Daphne so, like, Daphne so Sheldrick cool. runs it now. Her husband David passed away, and she is the matriarch of saving elephants. She's in her early eighties. So you 80s. know these people? Yes, we we actually donate money to them. Okay. We spot we um, we have about a dozen animals we've adopted around the world, and uh, we have. Elephants there, but they just added rhinos. They've got two baby rhinos Aww. now. Mm. So wow. It's a great organization that's yeah. so doing a lot. When, do, when the elephants grow up after they've had their, you know, their personal human, do they stay no, there they them, or do they let they, them go? They, yeah, the idea is to let them back into. And you it, know. do they have any YouTube videos of the elephant of coming back do. and recognizing the person yeah. after, like you see it with sure. the lion one? Sure, like Twitter. They'll be like, oh, so and so, like baby Has that, does that really ha- came back to say hi. <laughs> does that really happen? It actually, they just had one where the, a baby elephant they raised is now a mother and brought her baby back Aww. to the Sheldrick Foundation to show it off for real. Oh, my God. And that's a YouTube. Wow, okay, that's beautiful. I bet it is. It's really yeah, beautiful. that's pretty She's cool. Like, Look, look, baby, you're going to get some good digs here yeah. in your own human yeah. Yeah. toy. Yeah. Yeah, well, bi- elephants are so intelligent. Yeah, I mean, they're amazing. like humans they in elephant form, basically. Wow. And the biggest thing well, was, was, just was figuring out how to, the right elephant milk. And they, they, they actually w- spent years developing the right formula for the babies to survive off of because you can't just give them regular milk. Do elephants breastfeed? Oh, for four years. They do four years. Do they make their own cheese? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Bel- Belgian question. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've yes. seen them being trained for that. Mm. They'd be smart enough. I, <laughs> I think they would be. So, how does an elephant breastfeed? Where does the trunk go? 
You just like how, same as they eat, they just flip it over the back. They have back. teeth. <laughs> they have teeth. No, yeah, no, I mean, have. where does the baby's trunk? I think it just they flips flip it, it over. It over yeah, just flips back. it over the back. Yes, it is some great footage of baby elephants trying to figure out what to do with a trunk once they realize they have one. It's, mm. They they wiggle that thing and throw it all around like crazy. How interesting! Yes. How, we, uh, how did Charles? How did you get into this whole thing? I. Um, you know, I left New Orleans and went out to California and started going to Alaska doing some photography. And then... Uh, that doesn't... Any of that doesn't make sense, but it doesn't really like matter. I, didn't I, put, I, I went to I, California. It's hot here. Uh, no, well, <laughs> you come from, you're from New Orleans. I'm from New Orleans. And then you I went to California a, and then you didn't go to Alaska. That doesn't and make my, sense. And my, I got assigned Alaska as a territory. Oh, wow. So I'd go up to Alaska. Is that like a promotion or the, were you the worst guy on the company? I was a promotion. That was it was amazing. Here's the good news. Yeah, it was a good, they so while they dragged desirable. you to the manager's Where office. Can we send <laughs> that? Yeah. 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 Good news, Bob. Listen, good, good news. We're giving you your own territory. It's, uh, it's Alaska. It, There's 14 people there. Well, I was covering it out of San Francisco. <laughs> and it's all night. So, nice. Yeah. yeah so was, From San Francisco. So That's I'd fly beautiful. to Anchorage, go to spend some time in Anchorage, then fly to Fairbanks. Do and you fly only back. go in the daytime or the night? I mean, can you only go for six months a year? I actually would. I I. Spread it out. Sometimes I'd go in the middle of winter just to see what it was like. What I, is it like? It's not Iceland. They have. It's dark. They don't have. No, they don't. No, it's not oh, it's not dark north. all no, night. No, no, or winter. <laughs> no, they don't oh. have like six weeks, months of winter. Like it was know. fifty below one time when I was in Fairbanks, <laughs> and, and wow. we we were just cool. doing work yeah. at an Air Force Nasty. base up there. I don't like it when it's fifty. Did you about. talk about California? Do they know that that's down there? They just you know <laughs> head right down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, right down there, you could be living like in paradise. Mm-hmm. What were you selling to the Alaskans? Don't, I, don't say ice. For no, sure. no. <laughs> <laughs> I um, during the I'm much older than the rest of the panel here, but I was during I, the '80s. Ronald, good. Re, you know, we started doing the uh, Air Force base renovations, and most of those guys had not had new equipment since World War II. So my job was be at an Air Force base or an aircraft carrier every day for about 10 years. So you're not working for the U.S. government? No, I was just an en- I was an engineer in charge of renovating all these bases and facilities. Okay. But, uh, but so what are you putting in there, like a new couch or some tile? Um, you know, the guys, you know, the, the, the enlisted men, I had, they have a lot of shops where they repair the planes. And it's phenomenal to see, like, we have, you know, the spy planes, the bombers, the fighters, all these different planes that, are, that it takes to run a, a facility. And they, they have a lot it's of... It's called an Air Force, I think. And it's called an Air Force. There's like yeah. 20,000 people on a base. 20,000? And there's all these guys... In Alaska? In, in every base. There must right. be in the West Coast, there's probably So all these Air Force bases, bases you hear about, Fort Polk and the Elgin Air Force Base and all these ones we drive past, yes. they all have 20,000 people. 15 to 20,000. Holy shit, that's it's, a lot It's of, huge. Yeah. And then I would go to each base and, and figure out what they needed to have a better work environment to repair the wheels, the engines, whatever it took to fly, fly the plane. So you were in the sort of engineering side of Engineering. This. But I, I want to skip to the, the, the elephant thing, <laughs> bring it home. Mm. I, uh, I got, was taking all this photography of these wild animals, got on the town art committee, and the mayor took a liking to me and says, if you want to be mayor, I'll mentor you. So I ended up becoming mayor of this little town. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> this story's taking on a whole new I'm sorry, what? I, thought, I thought Dumbo was going to come flying into your Air Force base. <laughs> what was the name of the town? I was waiting for uh, you have to tell me. It's Atherton, California. Uh, I'm sorry. Nice. Atherton, California. Mayor of awesome. Atherton. But we know it better as Silicon Valley. Probably. I mean, it was in the middle, just north of Palo Alto. So you were the mayor of Silicon Valley. Sort oh, of. Man. Yeah. He didn't, like, so you could be rich. About? You could be like, like got quite a story. You could be really? like a gazillionaire now. Like it's it's three lifetimes so in one so, so far. So, yeah. So, yeah. Some, so somebody then asked me if I could look at the political side of how to save elephants. Mm. Somebody back to New Orleans. Somebody. Somebody. And, and who I, was, I, who I asked you that? Hey, Mayor. Did he have an accordion? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, may us. Accordion <laughs> player in Palo Alto. <laughs> it was a piano player. And uh, as you said, oh, you know, like oh. these elephants are being killed piano. very aggressively right now. Can you do something? So I started looking at the laws. I mean, did you, what did you say? Why me? Yeah, why me? Why me? I'm, I'm the busy. Mayor. I'm the fucking mayor of, mayor of, of Atherton. Atherton. I'm busy. <laughs> well, did you say, yeah, population. okay, I'll do it. I'll save the yeah, elephants. That's right. Right. I said, like, like, I took a look at it. had some, had some uh, What did you see that you felt attracted to elephants in Kenya? Well, the... Um, the elephant is, is such an icon of so many things in America, and, and it's just such, so lovable and so intelligent. It, it's, we grow up in the circus with it. We do so much with elephants. You didn't grow up in the circus as well, Tom. No, but my, my, uncle, my uncle was a Shriner. You think about the Shriners, you went to the circus. Of course he was. <laughs> yes. Okay, my uncle was a Shriner. There's so many good titles <laughs> yeah, for the like show. American elephants? Yeah, that's Amer- right. Have people written a book about you yet? The mayor of Palo Alto and his elephants. Yeah, I'm writing, I'm writing well, these down. Well, Dumbo. Yeah, Dumbo. Dumbo. Okay, Dumbo. That's, that's, that's an American that's thing. Okay. 
That is awesome. Yeah. What a story. It is, it's been pretty... Uh, yeah. Not, that is well, it's the mayor of Silicon do Valley, you, really. Do you know that Washboard Chaz, our local washboard hero, was the mayor, I think, of Golden, Gold, Colorado? Gold no Hill. Oh, Gold Hill, Colorado. Oh, really? I would love really? to meet him. That would yeah, be you guys have a lot to talk about, I think. Well, I, and I you were going to say a lot in common there, but you see you changed your mind I about did, that. because... <laughs> There is a lot of differences really. as well, but, <laughs> but I, I do think well, that you guys would, would have a similar story about becoming mayor of a small town, I, just sort of haphazardly it, in it, a way. It, it, it wow. just, you never carries. know how it's going to carry you. I want to be, right. be mayor of a small town. We can hook no you up. No doubt you will. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Helen, listen here for a minute. I have to, do, yes, sir. I, I have to read these uh, sponsor messages. Okay. So do you think you could play some sort of cello piece behind me while I read oh, these? Oh, sure, and yeah. Then, oh, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to make you play a song. And then we're going to come back and talk about why the accordion player had a nervous <laughs> breakdown, <laughs> yep. which that I we have still to have, have not got to the bottom that. of. Yeah. So Helen Gillet is an awesome um, cello, cellist, I suppose is the right word, if you've never heard her play before. She's also one of the um, founding members of uh, the Coochies, I believe, oh my God. was the name of the, of the band. And I think it was in Boston, no, no. wasn't Madison. it? Massachusetts somewhere? Madison. Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, in the, um, was it the 90s, do you think? Sounds right. That was something that she, after about four drinks, she told us that last time she was on Happy Hour. And I've never forgotten that story about Helen's all girl punk band called the Coochies. Good name. And check it out. I don't think they're on the internet. What are you doing to the cello? Warming it up? I'll just do a little sound check. Okay. So we're plugged into a whole bunch of wires and pedals here. No, it's okay. I mean, I was rubbing, rubbing the cello. Um, I use rosin. Oh, you can't hear me. You can't move on I in a wee a, bit. I'm a you know, I use rosin yes. to make a sound. It comes from a tree. Rosin is like a sort of amber or something. It's like grease. That's right. <laughs> okay. So that, that's rosin that you're... Oh, that's what you're putting on your fingers. You're getting that off the cello or you're putting that on the cello? She's making a loop. Making that noise to make a loop. Does oh, it make the, okay. the, the body more... Probably more tactile, so you can hear it more. Yeah. But now, right. so that's so that sound you're hearing now. Helen just recorded that, and that's now part of the whole deal. Oh, this is very cool. So, when should I start reading these sponsor messages? About now? Whenever you feel it. Okay. Hard. Our show today is brought to us by Petite Pet Care. If you're going out of town or you have a crazy schedule, the folks at Petite Pet Care will take care of your pet in his or her own home. No need to board him or her. For loving care when you're not there, go to PetitePetCare.com. Tell them you heard it on Happy Hour and see what they can do for you. Also, thanks to Basic Swim and Gym, we can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout and yoga clothes with style. Basic Swim and Gym is on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. And thank you, too, to our friends at Hangover Destroy which is the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Go to the Hangover Destroyer website. It's hdestroyer.com. Write happy hour in the coupon code and get 30% off of Hangover Destroyer and you too can seize the dawn. Helen Gillet on cello. Thank you. 
Helen Jalet. Jalet is spelled G I L L E T if you're looking for her on the internet or are you trying to steal any music off Spotify. Are you on Spotify with all the stuff? Some of it is. What, what's the record on Spotify? Um, Hang on, I'll let you just put that down. For I a think the record on Spotify is actually called Bangkok Silver. Okay. And um, there might be uh, my two latest ones. Uh, the other one is Dusk in Wallonia. Dusk and Wallonia. Which is a seven-piece big band that right. I'm leading with my, with my uh, voice. It's all French songs. Chansons, which is a fancy word. Fr- or French equals fancy <laughs> word for, sh- <laughs> for song. Right. Yep. But it's a tradition also. Of a, of a sort of so, but is any of the stuff, with, just if you, the loop, you, you um, listen to that, that was, just, that was one person with one cello making yeah. all that. That song, sound. that song is called Kibi. It's inspired by a Brazil, North Brazilian rhythm. How do you um, spell Kibi? K I B I. It's K-I-B-I. actually a food, okay. is it? food item. Kibby. Kibby, it's fried meat. Yeah. Okay. Why did you call it that? Uh, because I like that word, kibby. I thought it was a cute word. It's street food in Salvador, Bahia, when I went there. It's northern, uh, you know, go by. And I thought it was Lebanese. Well, I mean, I think it's all related to it's Africa. Thing? Okay. Um, and it, you know, African influence back on Back to the, the elephants. Ba- yeah, that's true. Um, Everything well, goes back there. Everything goes back to the elephants. That's right. So how did you, when did you start doing this whole looping? You've been doing that for a while. Well, I first bought a loop pedal um, 12 years ago, but I used it only at home for recording and composition purposes. So I just loop a bass line, and then I'd write a melody. Since I'm, I wasn't, I'm a cello player, but I was thinking like a keyboard player or a guitar player, but I can't play keyboard or guitar very well. So I thought I'd uh, use the cello just for multiple voices, if that makes sense. So loop a ba- bass line and then write a melody on top of that. Or vice versa, loop a melody and then come up with a good chord progression underneath that. Are, are you right. from New Orleans or did you land here? Um, I moved here 13 years ago. I landed here 13 <laughs> years ago. I was born in Belgium. Um, so <clears throat> my album, Dusk in Wallonia, Wallonia is the French-speaking part of Belgium. Huh. And it's a great word, isn't it? Wallonia. It is. I didn't know there was a W in French like that. And the people yeah. who live well, there are called Walloons. That's right. That's uh, right. And Leslie, how did you know that? Because I have an education. Jesus, she's I never a smart <laughs> one. Never, that, was, that was available to us. Even. <laughs> Walloon. Yeah, Walloon. So are, you a, are you a Walloon? I am. I'm a Walloon American. Yay. Walloon American. My That's dad is, something I, I was born knew. in, I was born over there. Um, my birth certificate's in Flemish, which is the other language of Belgium. Right. How do you spell Walloon so I can write Walloon is W-A-L-L-O-O-N. Walloon. Wow. What and our, our local film Enjoy. teacher at UNO... Um, Slash star of or one of the co star not co stars but he appeered in Terme as Henry a, Griffin Henry Griffin got it in one see good job yes. he's the other HG we like to say to each other okay. um, he uh, he came to my jazz fest show a couple of years ago and he said I think they keep booking you before noon in New Orleans because it's dusk in Wallonia uh, ah, uh, nice I was like, Henry nice. and he's like yes you can have it <laughs> very good so that became the name of your album that's Dusk right. and Wa- it that's is right. a great title yeah does he get a cut every time you use it no no I just he just gave it to me very the nice very of his heart. how do you know each other um, he we were both a fan of Abdul Wadud who's an avant-garde jazz funk cello player who played with Julius Hemphill Orchestra in the 1970s and I'm very interested in improvised music and we kind of met through the love of that and okay. he um hipped me to a solo album that he made and um and also his his wife uh is a dear friend of mine we taught at the country day creative arts camp my first ah. summer here living here in new orleans so she's the like king of the pussy footers or something yeah larissa gray right yeah are you a pussy footer as well I, i've learned some of the moves um, you're not in the whole thing because i don't know how you'd have time to do all that yeah i don't have time unfortunately of yeah. but i i all respect to those ladies shaking it yeah, out there yeah they've <laughs> made a huge difference to it they've made a whole difference to the whole of mardi gras actually oh yeah they changed mardi gras those girls yeah they did you think yeah i think so they completely so. changed the whole concept of who's when marching they, in a parade yeah, when yeah, did true, they come true. up come to be because i was gone for a while it came back and i, I see it was the, there the, yes um, at least 20, I want to say 20 years ago, Ooh, at least 15 years hurts. ago. Okay. Beca- well, fi- let's say 15 <laughs> yeah, right. because I moved here 13 years ago and, um, I was an honorary pussyfooter one year because I, I was uh, underneath 30 years old and you have to be 30 year o- older. 
Oh, you do? And they let me sneak in under oh, the radar. So, so this radar. is the reverse of the junior league. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was like, please let me, <laughs> well, please let me join the ARP early, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because the whole thing about those the girl marching bands or the girl, what marching groups in Mardi Gras were always high school kids. Right, absolutely. And I think women wanted to, you know, dance in Mardi Gras and parades. But the only way you could do it would be in a high school marching group. So someone, I guess, I guess she came up with this. They this. resurrected Princess Leia in the new Star Wars. <laughs> Things are changing. There you go. How, how did Loretta, how did she come up with that? Was that all her? Did she do, did she come come up with this whole thing? Um, I think I think she's part of it, but also Camille Baldazar, who's another. Um, she's a local artist. They both right. taught at the Country Day. She's a ceramic artist. So you were a teacher at Country Day. Yes, I taught a soundtrack class, a looping class, and a ukulele class. Oh, so you play fancy. the ukulele. I don't play well, <laughs> uh, but it well doesn't take much. You know, my, my fingers are tough from playing cello, so I know how to fret, you know, right. um, which is half the battle. And then you just learn a couple chords and you can play like, you know, 85% of all songs ever written. So. For, the, for the ukulele? In, no, in life. In like, anything. In, in really? anything. Yeah, one, four, five will get you ever, a, a lots of places. One, four, five means what? Like... C, uh, F, and G, that we C, would call. C, F, and G. Right. That's, that's right. all you really need. That's pretty much all happy you need. Birthday. It's 85%. Yeah, in different combinations. I mean, like happy 85 birthday is even, what, F, G, might C, be like 90. F, C, G. Mm-hmm. You know, you yep. switch them around. What's like saying DNA has only got, got like A, C, T or something to it, but it's... <laughs> Every form of life is made up of it, including those little That's bugs right. that are crawling on your eyelid. Well, not yours because you've got the stuff on. Oh, that reminds me. You know, I read an article that all those little like bugs on your face actually get passed down from generation to generation. So, in other words, really? like if you're from like North America, like you'll have the same like one kind of like little tiny bugs, but then if you're from China, you'll have another. T- little, I read that the other day. And do they travel with you from country to country? Because you ask where they came from, and I'm like, yeah. that's the thing. They actually get passed down. So from, they're like, they're race specific. Well, not race, which, I don't, which is not a thing, because there's only one race, the human race. Well, but well, what they specific are, are they? They're ethnicity specific. They're ethnicity specific. Or location Lo- specific. Location. location are there like Catholic bugs no, and no, Jewish bugs? No, no, they bugs? are completely, completely They're not religious. Not religious. So when two ethnics mate, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, they take the best of both ethnics as the end product. Do these bugs, if they mate, uh, do the same they thing? Might have, see, if you, have two, if you grew up with two parents, you might get both of their <laughs> well, little tiny second. bugs on your face. Are you in, do you inherit these from your parents? Yeah, essentially, you, yes. When you say they're ethnic specific, well, they're not really Well, I just mean really like in the larger sense, they're ethnic so, but specific. Are they Chinese like in other words, Chinese bugs people have different little microscopic bugs. They're different face ones than Korean. Well, no, I wouldn't go that far. But if far. you're Korean but American, from like me, yeah, you're like getting American from bugs. Ameri- from like someone born in the United States, we have different. Why? That, that you know, that's the you know, that's the question. So it's country specific. Well, I mean, they can't. I mean, are, what are they rafting over? <laughs> well, that's I mean, following people, people like around. Passed I mean, on from <laughs> mother to child. Like, you know, it's it's more of like a. It's it's like so a, they're inherited. Not inherited, but they're yeah. I mean, well, I guess. They, they Leslie, what, where, where, was the, where was the article? Baby's face. Where was the article you read this on? Uh, the Daily Mail. Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing a story the right UK now Daily on, Mail, on, on uh, City Park, and there's a snail that wasn't native that now is in City Park. So mm. maybe is these it bugs. the big one? Yeah, it it's is the big one. Big, yes, yeah. we're doing that's what color? See, shell, those shells. It's really big. It's about gosh, it's like three Pop, like. Yeah, fist. Fist, 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 fist well, and it was there, snail. not there before. Some somebody got him out of their aquarium, threw him in the lagoons. Oh boy, it's taken over. The giant snail of but city park. I guess it's the same thing Another with the, fate, the birds are wow. loving it. Wow. Yeah. So is that? Oh, it's going to become a legend. <laughs> Tourists are going to come. Where is the giant snail in city park? We want to see it. Well, Nola Gondola has one on his. He, he shows one to all his customers. Oh my gosh! Oh. Like the Loch Ness monster. Yes. Maybe they eat roaches. Hopefully. That would be good. <laughs> Slowly. So catching someone must have bought two snails, or do they have asexual reproduction? Ooh, I haven't studi- studied snails, but um, hmm. I think they Does anyone they know how yeah. snails are born? Yeah, I'm going to go mating. Leslie, yeah. you have an yeah. education for God's sake. <laughs> I just know male <laughs> seahorses can get pregnant. That's as far male as seahorses can get pregnant. I have a liberal pregnant, arts okay. education, which doesn't exclude science. Well, you, and well, frogs, <laughs> frogs okay. are the reason that Jurassic Park could happen. That's all I remember. No, yeah. that, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Frogs are not That's endangered, right. are they? Charles? Some, some are, yes. Some are. Some, when actually, uh, when I was mayor of our town, we had to stop construction because we found a few spotted something frogs in a mm. canal. Wow. And then we shut down everything to, to save that frog. Oh. Huh. And did you save the frog? We did. And, you know, or the EPA was going to be all over us. Well, I hope <laughs> they send a thank you card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we, and, frog and, and every, every Father's Day, the frog sent me a note thanking me, and mm-hmm. it's great. Nice. Well, that's a nice, well, that's a sort of a, a um, what's the word for it? town. 
Uh, Liberal? No. Progressive. Progressive. Yeah. That's a progressive town. Thank you, Helen. That's a, I mean, that wouldn't happen in a lot of places, I wouldn't think. In California, it probably happens a lot more than you think because we, we, yeah. were, we were shocked when somebody walked in and said, you know, we found the spotted something frog there, and I, I went up the creek and saw where they were breeding. I'm a little surprised that you don't remember the actual name of it. I, it was the spotted, and there's one word in there, something frog. frog. Spotted dick. <laughs> <laughs> spotted dick frog. That's it. I just didn't hey, want to say it on yeah. the air. Andrew, I'm going to make you play a song, and then after that we're going to come back and talk about how, why the accordion player had a nervous break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this time we really are, right? If you insist. I'd still like to know what a nervous breakdown is, but we'll get to that in a minute. Andrew, what are you playing today? I would, uh, I'm going to, I, you me. know, I was working on something this afternoon, and I, I thought that. I had just enough of a breakthrough that I could play it from front to back, so I'm going to play you something super okay. fresh. So I, I haven't even in played here. this for my mom yet. I walked oh, in here. I, w- I walked in <laughs> I, I hope she's going to listen today. to this. World premiere. Andrew was sitting at this table in this bar here at the Wayfair with a little notepad writing something. I said, what are you writing? You're writing a song? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I won't there disturb it is. you. There's a notepad. And here it, here's a notepad. You can see it on... I just wrote it today. <laughs> oh, you can see it on our news. This is crazy. Yeah. On, on, wow. Yeah. This is pretty I impressive, the right? The I try to shy away from the whole notepad thing, you know. Well, you have a little notepad, though. Well, I mean, I just mean uh, like playing a song off a notepad. It oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, this is you have the good radio, so nobody, now everybody knows, but they wouldn't have known if you hadn't said anything. Mm-hmm. But you have really good eyesight because that is in also very tiny writing. Well, I'm getting pretty close. Beware those without awesome. notepads. Really? Yeah. Do you have a notepad, Helen, for jotting down ideas? It's much larger, and my ideas are not. No. I'm not able to write that small. Me neither. I'm that is, real that is almost a um, micro- also beware the man of one book. Uh, ah, right. Uh, mm. uh, yes, well, you have good. more than one very of these good. notebooks then, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Missing for days Comes back soaking wet All covered in thorns and brambles and Those traveling songs Only get in the way Making men like me Believe they need to ramble I'm somewhere in the Midwest Between holding out and holding out my hand You wither in the storm Of a love that's off and on again I love you then I'm gone again No man's land No man's land and miles of placid ocean Mine is a rowboat that I drag through landlocked time What is it that keeps these wheels of mine in motion Between never settling and someday settling down I just keep burning to the ground Weather in the storm Love that's off and on again I love you then I'm gone Again and again 
no man's land no man's land no man's land no Andrew Duhon. That, that, was that was a great little song, that wasn't it? Well, you From know, today, fresh off the It's just going to be another one of those podcast songs that I'm going to listen back to and think, that wasn't finished. Really? It sounds oh, wow. finished to me. If you remember, it sounds finished to everyone else. What about this? What about this? My heart is a rowboat that I tow through landlocked towns. Mm. Yeah. What well, a line. I like, I like it because the line before you described her heart as an ocean. Yeah. So it's right, like, right. why don't you? But what if you, uh, you know. Your heart is an ocean. What is it? What are the rest of it? Yeah, your heart is miles and miles of placid that's ocean. ocean. Mine is Mine a is rowboat, rowboat that I drag through landlocked towns. Now that's beautiful, isn't it? It, it is. It is beautiful. It was Thanks, y'all. Where were you born? Over you. I was born in Houston, Texas, but I don't like to talk about that. Okay. Why not? No, well, you know, okay, so my folks, uh, my folks uh, met here, and uh, my, fo- my father grew up in Kaplan, which is kind of by Lafayette. My mother grew up here in New Orleans, and so they're New Orleans folks. But then my dad moved to, to Houston for a job for about a year or two, and I was born there. But then they moved me back before I was one, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was back in New Orleans before I was one year old. Okay, so now. you're, yeah, you're all right. I was just, have, you, have you ever portaged a canoe? No. Well, it sounds like you have. <laughs> what, what is, what, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, what, what does I don't that even mean? know. That, that means when you when you go between lakes and you have to carry a canoe. Oh, oh right. You got to, you know, at some overland. point you're going to overland. Like uh, people uh, yeah, that live in that. like the Upper Peninsula of That's Michigan. That's got a word. <laughs> portage. Have, have portage. You been, have you been through the West? Uh huh. Because uh, I actually am writing a book about Route 66 right now. I've yeah, driven sure. that a lot of times. Yep. And it seems like one more thing. I'm writing a book about Route 66 <laughs> on yes. top of saving the elephants. Wow. Yeah, you oh know, my goodness. Being mayor of Silicon <laughs> can Valley. I, can, I tell you, can I tell you what my breakthrough was on that tune today? Because mm-hmm. it really kind of hit me in the chest. I was trying to write this song about no man's land because I was thinking about this idea. I had just let go of this woman who was you know, truly good to me. And I found myself in this place where um, I couldn't really go for anything else but I couldn't go back to where I was so I was in this no man's land and I kept trying to write this no man's land song about like you know cheers from you know where I am this place between you and something else and I can't really figure out which way to go but then today what I realized is the no man's land is where she is she's in this place where this guy keeps traveling and she doesn't have her man She's in no man's mm-hmm. land, you know. She doesn't have her man, and she also doesn't know whether to break it off or try to make this pull this thing closer, that, you know. Y- your music seems to, to indicate you've been on the road and you're well traveled and, and seen a lot of the country. That one, that one, you, well, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, that's that's the, that's been the thing for the past five years or so is you know getting around, playing the tunes. Helen knows. Yeah, but I was going to say every time you said no man's land at the end there, every time it meant something a little bit different. Yeah, nice. You know, Thanks. by the end yeah. of the song, you're yeah. like thinking about it. So. so has being a musician wrecked your personal life as well? Oh my hell? god, totally, <laughs> totally. So big shout out to my four year boyfriend out there. So you've had the same boyfriend for four <laughs> years. Yeah. Well, that's pretty impressive. Incredible, actually. All right. Do you have children, either of you? No. Don't. Oh, no, my, because both you of my think they make were, shitty parents or because you've had a bad experience? Both my parents were actors. Experience. I'm like totally, totally fucked up. Both of your parents are actors and that's why you're fucked up. Damn. Pretty much. How fucked up are you? <laughs> we got to get Helen to play No, I'm just yeah. saying. It's difficult. I don't know. You it's turned difficult. out pretty well. Yeah. You don't seem that well, fucked up, but we don't know you that well. The more we get to know you, we'd find out. This what, is my exoskeleton what are your uh, What are your major psychological issues? No, I'm just, I'm just, I don't want to get into it. I think it's the bugs on the eyes. The bugs on the eyes. Okay, Helen's going to play another song for us. <laughs> What's this one? Um, well, because I didn't really set up a mic that can be close enough to my face as a seated cello player. I could hold something for you. Um, well, that might be a little awkward. Okay. I, move, I flap around a lot with right. the bow. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one called Renard, which means fox in French. And this is inspired by a children's story where a fox and a crow... Um, are interacting together in the forest. The crow's up in the tree, and the fox is below, and the crow seems to have a piece of cheese in its mouth. 
Hmm. We don't get the backstory. Maybe okay. it was elephant cheese. <laughs> 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 well, you were asking about that earlier. The, the Do f- elephants make cheese? Yeah, so I know. Yes. Oh, right. All right. The fox, so, okay. the fox comes by and says, oh, Mr. Crow, you're so beautiful, and you have the, your, uh, your plumage is so silky and, and beautiful, and the crow's feeling pretty, pretty nice. And the, the fox is realizing he's going he's gonna to do well here playing on the crow's vanity. So he says, why don't you sing us a song? Your, your song is the most beautiful song in the entire forest. And so the crow opens its mouth and drops the piece of cheese, and the fox runs away. And, huh. and that's the cunning little fox. I learned that when I was in French school in Singapore. Um, this is a children. Oh, is this a children's song? Yeah, uh, it's a children's you've adapted? Poem, poem by Jean okay. de La Fontaine. Uh, the fables of Jean de La Fontaine, worth looking into. Okay, I'm sure they're all translated in English too. So, anyway, this is inspired by that song, but it's a whole takeaway of that. But now you got the story at least. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, try cool. and get to it as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few buttons to push here. That's fine. Not as many as the diatonic yeah. accordion. <laughs> <laughs> Just reminding you, this is one person and one cello. Okay, I'll take those. Okay, I got it. Voici Extraordinary things I've ever seen on this show, don't you think? Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. It's uh, it's crazy what you're doing here. 
It's pretty neurotic. But it's amazing how you can remember. I mean, you're not only playing, I don't know how many parts on the cello at the same time. There's no frets on there either. Remember that. (laughs) (laughs) But then your feet are punching these pedals. It's seemingly not in in any rhythm, but turning on and off parts that you've recorded before. I mean, not before, but right here today. And you're wrong about the rhythm thing, too. Like, you uh, got to be kind of on it, don't yeah, you? But the, yeah, but the first, one, one, out, the right? first on. one has to be on. And right. then from there, there's some, there's some malleability. Yeah, nice, but the yeah. things that you're punching in and out, the tracks that are coming in and out off these, from these pedals that you're right. turning off and on, right. that's not like you're hitting them in time. Right. Right. That's like coming in at a place mm. and out at a place. I mean, right. it's in a certain point of the song. Yeah, it's like you're, the foot is the recording engineer. And and then you know then it's extraordinarily complex. Well, it you know it takes a while to get yeah. get under your belt. Teaching it, kids how to do it, you know, well, doing it, it a lot. Maybe complex, but what you guys are doing is just so um, you seem, seem so much at peace with your lives, and that's a takeaway for me today. Is it just mm. listen to you play, and I didn't get to hear the accordion, but. But it's a different thing. And she's a shitty it. accordion. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Otherwise, it would have got to hear. You know, it's a great takeaway that, that music has done so much and that it's being instilled in the young people to have that balance in life. Well, yeah. don't you think if you could do what these guys do, and we can sit all here and talk and be entertaining and funny and witty and one thing or another, but if you could then, on top of that, sing or play like that? Oh, absolutely. Doesn't that, isn't that a whole other dimension to life that we it don't is. have access to? I mean, we can enjoy it. Right. But we and can't I sing s- such as it is. I mean, I'm not professional yet because I have a regular job. But would you like to be a professional singer when you say yet? Yes. Yeah. But okay. well, you know, you're fucked up enough, right? My entire life, like I've always either like played instrument either for fun or for my own enjoyment. Like music is such, you know, I just can't imagine living my life no matter what else I'm doing without playing music, whether it's for money or in front of other people right. or some, you know. How often do you sing? Well, you know. Um, about once a month right now. But at I, home, I mean, do you sing every day? Oh, yeah, I practice a little bit every day, right. yeah, sure. So you do it every day, right? Yeah. Well, I think that, yeah, like, it's nice, a keyboard. it's nice to promote singing every day or music as a part of your life, one's life. I think that getting away from that um, is, is not, not a healthy society, you know? Uh, having music just part of everyday life, like, that's why it's... It's important to keep it in the schools. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and everything. That's why I've been so lucky. I mean, I you know I started piano lessons when I was like two or three because my grandmother played, my mother you know sure. like it wasn't like a big deal like it was something people did. You know what I mean? Like okay, now you can go to piano class. Like okay, you know and and it just adds such a dimension to one's life absolutely. to even have you know not to be a virtuoso but just to even be able yeah. to just create your own music or. And then appreciate other music. and well, That yeah. may be what makes New Orleans special, is, is people, when we look around the rest of the country, New Orleans still has that specialness, and it's the music. You know, people come here for Jazz Fest, like you guys play, and, and just to see that, but it, it's people pick up instruments and jam with each other and just do so much, and it does says so much for the city when you talk about why people are here. I think more generally it's the expression. I think people are freer to express themselves, whether it's somebody who's not creative at all in their re- in their general life, but... At, on a Mardi Gras day, they're willing to dance in the street. I think uh, there's something about that expressiveness that it feels like really breathes in this place, you know. It's really growing up. I mean, we all talked about being teenagers, being fat, and having fat faces and stuff like that. I mean, for kids, it can be such an outlet, you know, to have music or some other kind of artistic expression, even if they don't end up doing it for a living. You know, it's just it's a way to like get out of yourself for a second, you know, and get out your emotions that you can't do in, like, class or with well, your you, friends. You can or play sports, I suppose, is the same sports thing. Sports is the other thing. But then, yeah, then you're going to be brain damaged. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, music, actually. Ten- like, tennis, you know, I think. Is but then you can, tennis, you can express, tennis is okay. express your brain damage through Not the music <laughs> after. <laughs> well, <there's that. laughs> Nothing like taking a good football hit and then writing a song. All right. Right. Hey, listen, we've got to get out of here and make way for paying customers. So before we do, though, it would be remiss of me not to make you tell the story about the accordion player with a nervous breakdown. <laughs> That's right. And then we really are leaving. <laughs> so what happened? Well, okay, so um, I was uh, singing along with this my, my friend, who I won't name. I guess he's What's up. his name? <laughs> Josh Corda. Okay. <laughs> He's, he doesn't do that. He's like, he's like, you know what he does now after his break, nervous breakdown? Yeah. He's like a Zen Buddhist like cult leader now. He has Did like you put a whole, scare quotes around that just now? Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, quote. He's a cult he's, leader. Yeah, he runs. So we can state, find him? He, yeah. He, 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 What's look, the dude's name? He runs like some studio in New York called Dharma Punks. Dharma Punks. So Punk. it's like, oh, he's like, like a very punk, Buddhist 
like what's the teacher Kerouac book. Dharma yeah, junkies. Dharma, Dharma no, it's, Dharma it's, kings. Play Dharma, on that, something. something like that. Whatever. Anyway, so we were playing out, and then all of a sudden, you know, he. Uh, I mean, I remember we were doing. Uh, we were actually playing a song because we used to play. Um, we were playing. Uh, oh, what's that Peggy Lee song? Uh, is that all there is? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, so he would play the accordion. I would sing, "Is that all there is?" You know, is where, that all there where, is my friend? Where are we in our life? let's keep dancing. You know that whole thing. Let's break out the booze and have a ball. If that's all there is, you don't have to sing as low as I do. <laughs> I know. Anywho, the, the nice. and then he like then he basically broke into tears like on stage during the song. Yeah. And then his what girlfriend. kind was he drink drinking no, a lot doing no, any no, drugs? No, totally or? sober. In fact. Okay. And uh, his girlfriend like took him home, and the next thing I knew, he was like in like the mental hall. He was in Bellevue. Well. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, he literally. Had and it was drink. a Peggy Lee song. Is that all there is? Oh, yeah. So is good. That all there is. I like uh, P. J. Harvey's version. I she haven't heard it. it. She does. Yeah, I'm sure. So that was a, that, that's the mental breakdown story. Well, that's thanks for that. And then so he went into Bellevue, which must be a pretty difficult place to survive in by itself. And then yeah, he came no, out. No. Then he came out. He came out then, as a Buddhist. Yeah. Then he's like cult this like crazy leader. like Buddhist cult leader now. I mean, uh, yeah. You don't and hear the words Buddhist and cult leader together too often. What what, what is a Buddhist cult? Is well, it? uh, it's not. I, I, I mean, perhaps I go too far, but it seems to me that what well, he's sort doing of a, is a quotes. You know, it's bullshit. What you're saying? Like I know the way. He's got like he's like tattooed up and all down his arms now, where he wasn't before. Was well, it possible that he has learned something? Where did that come from? Did, that, know, did he get enlightened? Maybe. Cool. Well, I'm pissed off because like because he ruined we were, your like, fucking we're career. Gigs in New York City, and yeah. like totally Which like can't had, be that easy. Out on me. Now the guy. <laughs> yeah. Now what happened to his know, wife? I'm such. I'm so like. Compassionate, aren't I? Hmm? Well, but I the mean, band, bro. Yeah, I know. Really, like, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is a, dude. This like, is, come on. We talked about the importance of the, you know, expression of music yes. as an outlet. You know, you get pissed off when you lose a band member. <laughs> yep. No, we were family. playing like we're gonna play. Like, we were playing like they're gonna play like the cutting room and like Arlene Grocery. I mean, like real places. Come on. Now. Come well, on, like, you know what? This is. I mean, couldn't you replace him with another accordion player? He's no, the only accordion player. One. You couldn't find an accordion so player in New York City. You can't find an accordion player. What about player the eighteen know girls play, in the band? Like, you know, is that all there is? And like, brother, can you spare a dime? You know, on I'm surprised you didn't use that as an excuse to learn the accordion well, and go and accompany what I did. yourself. Right. That's what I did. That's how, how I got into the orchestra. Oh, so I went, you were learning to. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's, okay. I was okay. like, fuck it. I'm gonna play accordion yeah. myself. Next time I'm on WWZ, you better have that shit together. Yeah. Really. But she's at WWZ every day, so you mean you could go oh, in right, there? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. at WWZ <laughs> every day from roughly you could dra- 10 so to you 6. Could, so you could drag Leslie on the air. <laughs> Helen, okay. All right. Well, that's yeah. something to look forward to. Could we all come to that? That would be pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. So are you still playing the accordion just to end the song? No, summer? no, I'm concentrating on singing. I sing with a traditional okay. jazz group called Jelly Jazz. All right. Here in New Orleans. Here in New Orleans. Okay. And I hope to... Well, they're not going to hear this. I hope to start my own trio soon. <laughs> no, well, this thankfully, year, that's my goal for this year. God, no one's listening to this. <laughs> well, New Orleans you know, is such okay, a big city, they'll never hear they it. They asked no. me to join <laughs> I'm them. I'm sure there's no one. No one, one listens to okay, this. Okay, no, no, no. No, this no, is, but you know, I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, fucking Jelly Jazz. <laughs> no, because they were really great and, like, allowed so me to anyway, sing with them. So, anyway, that's the end of Jelly Jazz. So, screw them. So, who's the new band then? I don't know yet. You know, when you're as. I don't know if I do that. Part of the Coochie's reunion. When you're just a singer and not. I don't play an instrument as well. It's yeah. a little harder because it's like must be great. That must well, be so. You no, know, because you have light. to find people to pay for. Yeah, no you equipment. Play with, and also they don't want to have to split their take with me. Like, Stay small. They could play, all. like they could play traditional Ooh. jazz, but without me. You know what I mean? They don't need me. But yeah, I mean, so. it's pretty hard to find someone who can really be sing really well, isn't it? I mean, if you're looking for yeah, a band it's with just a singer, be real here. it's true. true. But you know, also a lot of in this town, as you know, a lot of trumpeters. Sing also. I mean, you know, there are a lot of band leaders who okay. also sing, so right, right. they don't necessarily need like a girl singer. Okay. So, so, that's so wh- I went up to just form my own little, you know, trio. That's okay. My plan. So you don't have anybody in it yet. So if anyone's lis- no one listening to this, yes. so you blew up the last gig before having something <laughs> to go on to. That's that nervous stra- break. Strange, no, strange <laughs> behavior. All right. So you're looking for you're looking for band members to to join the band to play what bass, drums, and Actually, piano uh, or something. Uh, trumpet. Clarinet, guitar. Okay. Mm, I could do without drums or bass. It would be nice, but you know, but the very basic, like a clarinetist, a trumpeter, and okay. a guitarist would be great. All right. Well, if you listen to this and you play the clarinet, the uh, bass, or whatever else was it? Trumpet. 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 
guitar. How do we find you? Call WWOZ. You can call it. <laughs> Ask for the girl with the tiny eyes and the big round face the with, with the, the Cleopatra. Tiny <laughs> eyes and tiny the big round face. And her name is Leslie Molson. Leslie, thank you so Leslie much for, Molson, yes. for joining us today. Leslie, I know, if I have to say that with a different accent. I say Leslie where I come from, but it's Leslie here. That's how I pronounce it. Yeah, right. Well, that's okay. That's how everyone pronounces it except me. No, 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 that's not true. Oh, really? So Leslie, is that not that uncommon? I thought it was just a sort of People just say accent. Leslie. I don't know. I hate that name. It's a horrible name. What do you hate? What, you, what, you hate Leslie or Leslie? Le- bo- both. Both. Okay, so come up with a different what? name. What would you rather be called? Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Oh, okay. Wow, there you no, go. Well. Gwendolyn Molson. <laughs> okay, I'm writing that down. Have you thought about it's that nice before? Or did you just make that up after a couple of glasses of Chardonnay? No, no. Gwendolyn was my childhood fantasy name. Mm. Okay, well, let's go with that. I think Gwendolyn you should go Molson. with that. So do I. What, what do you think? I think you should go with that. Yep. Absolutely. Charles, you with it? Okay. I like it. It's got a good ring, Gwendolyn Molson, doesn't really it? It really does. Yep. Okay. Okay, well, Gwendolyn Molson, thank you so much. You have a consulting company now, Grant. Yeah, okay. (laughs) That's good. And if anything works out, we get 10%. If you call yourself the the Gwendolyn Molson trio. Killing her in the, uh, you know, dark, dark, the the album color. Dusk and Wallonia. Dusk Dusk and Wallonia. Wallonia. But you know what? Um, Gwendolyn Molson trio sounds awesome, doesn't it? Actually, it does. It really does. Or quartet, actually, even. You could even go to four with that. The Gwendolyn Gwendolyn Molson experience. Oh, nice. I get ahead of myself. Someday. I think, well, you know, you've got to do it. What yeah, are you waiting for? you got to do it. Which one would it's you go? It's on. What do you want? Trio, quartet, quintet, or experience? What do you think would be? Quartet. Yeah. Quartet, definitely. The Gwendolyn Those Molson guys. Quartet. Yes, okay, yeah. I like that too. All GMQ. Right. GMQ, Pretty nice. Short. All right, well, maybe you heard it here first on Happy Hour. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Gwendolyn Molson. Also, Charles Masala from MILF, M-I-L-F. No, not, <laughs> not called that exactly. With him. The, the Italian Mas- tongue is the best. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, where do we find you? It's A-W-E. <laughs> A-W-E dot news. And we're on uh, W-L-E on Friday nights now. Oh, W-L-E on Friday nights. And Helen Gillet, spelled G-I-L-L-E-T, if you're looking for her, what to good steal job. her music on Spotify or uh, anywhere else good music is streamed or stolen, you can find Helen Gillet. That's and right. look for her around New Orleans as well. Andrew Hahn. It's been fun, hasn't it? It has, man. It's good, good to be back. Good thing that we came back. Back to work here. Yep. Thanks so much for joining hear us. You. That's you too. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What a yeah. thrill. Our Musicians. show is produced today by Graham DuPonte, and our associate producer and technical director is Chris Kehoe. Christian Unruh is our fabulous music director, and our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can sit around the table for about an hour and have a couple of drinks and stay upright, drop us a line. Our address is on our website, where you can also check out many other happy hours and some other shows we make here as well. Out to lunch with Peter Raschuti, live from Commander's Palace, true to the game. With the fabulous Chris True, Midnight Menu Plus One with Margot Moss and the man who ate New Orleans, Ray Canada, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker, and Milo's Music Parlor with Kim Vu. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook, on Twitter, and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this page from the show. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook and Google Plus pages. These photos are taken by Alison Moon. If you listen to this show on iTunes or Stitcher or some other podcast app that you prefer, thanks for subscribing to us. Stop everything you're doing right now and take a moment to rate and review us. That helps other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street where they put fine dining into a sandwich, fine booze into a glass and have a fabulous brunch here on Saturdays and Sundays. Happy Hours of Production. I know Brooke Casting for itsneworleans.com for Andrew Duhon, me, Grant Morris, Helen Gillet, Gwendolyn Molson, Charles <laughs> yep. Masala, Graham DuPonte, Alice Moon, and everyone else around here at Wafer and back at our INO office. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next week on Happy Hour. Let's be honest. There are tons of ways to send money back home, and every company promises me the same things. Good rates and safe transfers. That's why it can be overwhelming to choose a new way to send money. I switched to Remitly because I can track my money every step of the way, which means I know exactly when my mom will get her money. And with their extensive payment network, my mom can receive her money in a way that is more convenient and safe for her. You should check it out. Go to Remitly.com or download their app to get started. Remitly, Inc. is a licensed money transmitter by the state of New York, California, Massachusetts, and other states.